Dear listener, sometimes we it's easier to talk about the mountaintop experiences or wearing your best shoes. Sometimes that's easier. But it's not necessarily what we're supposed to talk about. And yes, I do have my favorite shoes on today. They happen to be a pair of very old Converse. <laughs> Low tops in a neutral. Very old. And they are my favorite shoes. This episode is talking about some of the hard places and the hard questions. Things that I really do want to talk about. (laughs) Let me leave this one line with you. Who says we're supposed to live on a fixed income? Fixed in any manner, in any shape or form. Fixed the same. Nope. That's what I want to talk about today. I have my favorite shoes on. (laughs) And it was hard to talk about it. And I'm still not all fired convinced that I'm going to hit the the publish button. But, uh, (laughs) thanks for listening I'll see you on the inside Hello from the Pacific Northwest. This is Kristen from KristenWombach.com and you're listening to Intentional Now Podcast. Answer me this. How does a Baptist farm girl from Oregon stumble upon the mystical nature of Christ? The love of God. If you're like me, Jesus has redefined what you used to say yes to. Join me and my guest on a mystical journey. But before we talk about the spiritual woo-woo, you need to know I am totally sold out to Jesus. It's amazing what the love of God reveals. Okay. (laughs) I keep teetering on the subject matter for today, actually struggling not so much with what to talk about, but the things that I really want to talk about, I don't talk about. So let me try in the most authentic language that I can put on the table today. Yeah, I'm teetering in hmm. So let me pick apart my intro for a minute here. It says, hello from the Pacific Northwest. This is Kristen from KristenWombach.com. And you're listening to Intentional Now Podcast. Mm-hmm. Answer me this. How does a Baptist farm girl from Oregon stumble upon the mystical nature of Christ? the love of God. (laughs) If you're like me, Jesus has redefined what you used to say yes to. (laughs) Let's stop right there. That's a really good place to start. Because you know my history. A Baptist farm girl and... I fell in love with Jesus and everything changed. (laughs) Everything changed. So Jesus redefined what I used to say yes to. He redefined the gospel. He 
redefined my evangelical roots. And on this journey, <laughs> like I said, I want to talk about something today. And we're going to get there. We're going to have to be patient together. <laughs> So on my journey, which is written in the unfinished book, The, in, the Journey, <laughs> in 2010, because of this hunger and this fire to know God and all the trials that come along with wanting to know him as truth, in 2010, we started a ministry school, which was awesome. <laughs> and that opened the door to a, a large dwelling, a large house with 6,000 square feet. And it was wonderful. And then you take a small gathering of people who love God and are right there on the, the cusp. And all of a sudden, you want to gather. So that birthed a small church. <laughs> okay. Yay, God. But what I really wanted to talk about was in this transition, in this place, in being the leader that God calls you to, there weren't any resources or salary in those years. Mm -mm. And that's hard. It's difficult. <laughs> and that's kind of what I want to talk about today. I want to put my voice out there on that, the, the topic of resources and how they relate to our faith and our beliefs. Because every week I share with you encouragements and the different ways that I have discovered the spiritual realm, the kingdom of heaven, and, and the questions that I ask and I ask you, and how they penetrate my own life, and how they have changed my quest for transformation. <laughs> So the interesting thing, despite the financial hardships for the choices that were made at that time, when this small group of people, when we transitioned to stepping through the veil into the kingdom of heaven, meaning that Holy Spirit taught us all how to see in the spirit and that's where we want to live. That's the camp we are in. You, you can't turn it off. And why would you? So we got smaller. <laughs> that didn't change the financial situation. We just got smaller. Yet... We still have this core group of people that, that love God. <laughs> so I continue to trust God for his plan. And then COVID-19 hit and my husband was laid off, which made our financial situation even more challenging. <laughs> So I have a question for you. I am 64 years of age. My question is, who says that we're supposed to live on a fixed income? 
And that's what I want to talk about today. <laughs> I want to talk about hard work and determination. Whew, very sensitive. <laughs> So I just went through and I added up how much money I have earned for this year from that hard work and determination. $5,500. <laughs> now, we all listen to podcasts just all the time that hype a handful of figures earned. <laughs> I listen to them. I, I gained some technology and some SEO insights, but I never quite figure out what they sell or what they trade that generates the income. <laughs> what was created that makes a difference in the lives of their customers. What's on the table? What's in their hand? What do they have to show for it? <laughs> Who says we are supposed to live on a fixed income? And that is the subject matter. I really want to talk about. <laughs> so this week in creating and doing, and I have five online stores, so it keeps me hopping and busy. <laughs> Some of the things that you don't hear about Oh, it's like this week. This is just beautiful. So one of my sons has been walking through a transition period oh, over a year. And in that difficult transition period, he um, was demoted in his place of work. And I encouraged him to hang on, to hang on. And he continued to work for the organization. And I was so proud of him. But this week, <laughs> he finally got offered a job and he got a promotion and he got a major increase financially. And that's the kind of stuff I want to talk about. What we pray for and how we pray for them. And what the spirit, what you do in the spirit that actually changes the natural. And, and this week, here I am, Boston buns, <laughs> making all my little social media blah, and creating some products. I have some new templates and planners that I have out there and <laughs> all the things that one does to get the information or the product to help people out there. I spend hours. <laughs> But I have a friend, a very dear friend. And this week, um, well, my dear friend who has had heart issues since she was 20. And she came back from vacation and her heart was in fibrillation and it wouldn't settle down. And so I was talking to her, and she said that her doctors, 
kind of with their hands in the air, said, well, the the next procedure that we could possibly do that might work <laughs> was an, an, an oblation. And she was describing what it would, what it was. And when she was describing it to me, I just thought, well, why can't we do that in the spirit? (laughs) So we did. (laughs) We walked through her heart and we asked Jesus to show us all the different valves (laughs) and the portions of the heart. Were they clear and clean? Or was there something that we needed to attend to? I recorded the whole thing because I felt like it was something that God had purposed for the body of Christ. I need to edit it for her own privacy. But it was amazing. And she texted me... um, the second morning and said that she woke up and her heart was beating normal again. (laughs) And yes, my dog is snoring in the background. (laughs) This is what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the practical determination of walking in the Spirit, seeing in the Spirit, and the difference in the way that we pray, the way that we do things. Who says that we're supposed to live on a fixed income? I don't think so. (laughs) I have dreams, desires, and things that I have been shown by the Lord that require resources. So I'm talking to you. Nobody else is listening, right? I'm talking to you to you because again I'm 64 years of age and I just don't run into a lot of people at that juncture in life that have the desire and the determination that God is a God of more than enough and that God that we may have just stepped into heaven and begun to learn these wonderful mysteries in the kingdom but there's more there's more to our life than the American dream says in retirement. <sighs> A long pause. I don't. <sighs> It's my sense of showing up, my sense of consistency that brings me here today. I just didn't want to (sighs) rekindle an old thought. (laughs) I wanted to talk about this. I want 
to talk about. The practical end of life and how we live in the spirit, how well <laughs> maybe it's good that I can just hear me talking. <laughs> but I just got this gut instinct that there's a whole lot of people out there that also need to talk about this. <sighs> it reminds me of one of my favorite passages. When Jacob and Laban were having a a bit of a tryst, because Jacob uh, had two wives, we know that story, and now he wanted to move on from underneath the employment, so to speak, of Laban. And I love the story that he talks about. I mean, makes a deal with Laban to take all of the spotted and the speckled sheep away and leave him with just the white sheep and goats. And I love the part of the story where he carved in the branches, the willow branches, the ash branches, and he carved spots and speckles and put them in the water trough. So every time that the sheep and goats came to drink, they saw what they were to give birth to. <laughs> they saw the miracle. They saw the multiplication. They saw Jacob's increase. <laughs> That's a good word right there. They saw Jacob's increase. And so when I talk to you about writing it down and journaling and the templates and the planners that I make, you know why. <laughs> well, I don't even know if I'm going to publish this. I don't know. But I talked about it. I spoke of it. And I got it out. I am determined. And I'm speaking to those out there who need to hear determination. <laughs> I think I'm finished. <laughs> yeah. Let's pray together, okay? <laughs> and remember what I said. Oh, who says that we're supposed to live on a fixed income? <laughs> fixed.
We need to nail that to the cross of Christ and break agreement with it. At what point in life are we not to increase? Are we not to grow? Are we not to learn? Are we not to develop? <laughs> are we not to discover? <laughs> are we not to create? Father, I thank you. <laughs> I just thank you. <laughs> My dog snoring. I thank you, God. And I'm grateful <laughs> for the unique strategy that set my dear friend's heart back into timing. <laughs> I thank you, God. for helping my son walk through a maturing season. And I thank you for the reward that you have given him. I thank you. What's that number here? <laughs> I think it's important. I wrote it down. Oh, for $5,518.87 that was created. <laughs> Thus far the year is not over. It was created. It wasn't there. And it is there. <laughs> and that's what I want to talk about. <laughs> so thank you God because that's what I want to talk about I want to talk to people <laughs> that want to talk about that <laughs> I do Oh, geez. Can I be this vulnerable? <laughs> I bless you. I bless you if it was you that were supposed to listen today. <laughs> I bless you. <laughs> okay. I showed up. Now we can change and now we can shift. Because I've got some good stuff to talk about. <laughs> yeah, we got to go through that spiritual oblation together. <laughs> yeah. God is good. <laughs> <laughs>